By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are showing you a more magic from the Raging Bull series, the old school tournament in Amsterdam. And we've reached the semi-finals. So the winner of this match is actually going to the finals of these of the first Raging Bull series and can become the first champion of this old school tournament held in Amsterdam. And let's have a look at the players. On the left side, we have Leo from Germany. So he's not from Switzerland, like I said before. So in Schildigung, he is actually from Germany. And he's playing with his deck Animate Robots. Now, if you're curious about his deck or haven't seen any matches yet, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. And it'll take you to a playlist of all the games of the Raging Bull series. Now, on this right, we have Mr. Fish Liver Oil cup himself it's megu one of the organizers of the fish liver oil cup and he's still playing with his dead guy ill deck on steroids and it's called on steroids because there's blue power in there if you're curious about his deck and would like to know a little bit more again you can click on the playlist and find out his game and in the introduction i give a little bit of information about the deck that um, he plays well for now i suggest we quickly go to uh, game one because i'm quite curious about this clash and you know to see who's gonna win this one uh, megu maybe has a slightly more aggressive build but leo's deck i believe is a bit more versatile so i'm very curious to see who's going to win this one so let's quickly go to game number one game number one and let's see I'm not sure who's on the place on the left side we have leo as you can see on the screen and on the right side we have megu from italy and there is a volcanic island followed by a mana vault so earlier I said maybe Megu's deck is more aggressive, but of course uh, Leo does play with some um, some spells that can help him. And ooh, this is a killer opening here by Megu with a Black Lotus and a Mind Twist. So he's able to just take away three cards there. And this is like the worst start for Leo, thinkable with that mind twist and a great start obviously for Megu but oh this is such a nice response well done here Leo playing that wheel of fortune and that's the best comeback that you can have and I see that uh, Megu is one of the cards he's losing here is a balance a very powerful card to get back from behind here but that's gone to the graveyard and uh, wow and interesting to see also is that Leo already lost his time twister there with that uh, mind twist but there's so much action, there's so much happening here. And there's another Black Lotus being slammed on the table. Uh, he's not using it at the moment. And what a comeback. I just love that when you do it after a Mind Twist and you um, you play Wheel of Fortune. I play Wheel of Fortune uh, myself and it's just great to do that. That or play a Balance. And here's a Dark Ritual and into a Sengir Vampire. But there's the Sack of the Black Lotus to cast a Mana Drain. And that means that he has five colorless mana now to use. And he uses that to cast a Triskelion there together with that uh, tapping of the factory, Mishra's factory that he just played. So that's a 4-4 four, four with three counters. And the counters can be taken off to deal a one damage each. Um, so it's actually a 1-1 one, one creature with three plus one plus one counters. And attacking here. And obviously uh, Leo is playing with those anime deaths and of course copy artifacts to quickly copy the Triskelions. And when they die, they go to the graveyard and he can play his anime debt and it'll just come back to life. So this is already a big problem here for Megu. After that great start with the Mind Twist. But because of that Wheel of Fortune, nothing really changed for, um, for Leo. And let's see what Megu can look up now with that Demonic Tutor. I mean, when you're playing with black, one of the difficulties, um, for instance, uh, if you compare it with playing with a color like green or white, is that it's way more difficult for you, or red actually, to get rid of artifacts. But here we see a Swords to Plows here. And what you see now is, this is interesting, is, or actually, oh, this is interesting to see. He's, he's, he's letting it... Uh, He's saying, okay, you can remove it from the game, no problem. And of course he does, because it's a copy artifact, it's an enchantment. So he doesn't really mind that it's removed from the game, because he has no way of getting it back. But he is able to 
hit um, Megu there for three. And now he's playing an anime den. And of course, he can look in somebody else's graveyard as well. And he takes a Tsengir Vampire from Megu. Megu's down on nine, playing a Juzum Jin here. And that's it. He's not going to win. And Megu says, okay, this game is for you. Let's quickly go to our sideboards and see what we can do in game number two. Game number two. So that... Victory went really quickly. What kind of happened there is he had two Triskelions on the field, so he was able to deal uh, six damage there at the end. And it's interesting, we see an Ancestral Recall in Leo's hand, so he has no reason to complain here. And there is a basic swamp here for Megu. I wonder what he boarded in. And there's a Volcanic Island here, and there's that Ancestral Recall. And there's the Mox Ruby and the... Ooh, soul ring and okay there's a demonic tutor here from Megu a good moment because Leo cannot counter at this moment but again a very explosive start here from Leo with that ancestral recall Mox Ruby soul ring and volcanic island so you can kind of see what you know Megu is up against because Leo's deck is actually very quick and that's something I definitely underestimated. And it looks like uh, Megu here has chosen to look up his Black Lotus. And what is he going to do with this three mana? Is he going to crack it instantly or is he going to wait a turn? Nice. So he's cracking it probably, playing, <laughs> playing a Dark Ritual and again playing a Mind Twist. And remember in the first game, Leo had a great response with that uh, Wheel of Fortune. But can he do that again? And there are four cards gone here. And there's a Demonic Tutor is one of the cards. And also a Red Elemental Blast. Probably boarded in there against that blue power from Megu. And passing turn here. And there's an Underworld Dreams. And the situation is looking a little bit better here for Megu. Because Leo is not able to come back as quickly as last time. And there's it. And there goes the Soul Ring. And a life for Megu. And because of that Underworld Dreams, it's an artifact from, or an enchantment, sorry, from Legends. And every time you draw a card, you get a damage. And here's a copy artifact. And he's copying his Mox Ruby. And this is quite interesting because he's playing a Sage of Latinam, a 1-2 creature from the Antiquities. And, ooh, I wanted to explain what it does. You can tap it to second artifact and draw a card. But as you can see, there was a quick Swords to Plows here. And the fact that the Sage of Latinams are being destroyed so quickly, that's kind of telling you how important this card is. And I guess he's now copying the Chaos Orb. That seems to be the sensible choice here. And interesting to see here is that um, exactly. Oh, let's... Oh, there's a miss. There's a miss. Leo missed it. I wanted to say it's interesting because he can now activate his Chaos Orb on the Chaos Orb because Mago had no mana left. But it's a miss. Wow. That doesn't happen often when you're in a semifinals. That is nice, though, about the Chaos Orb. There's always a chance that your opponent will miss. And there's Megu doing his flip, and that is a hit. So the Black Lotus is gone. But what I'm kind of missing here from, from Megu is a follow-up. And there is that blue power, the Ancestral Recall. Three cards for just one blue mana. That's, of course, insane. Many say that is the best card in Magic and not the Black Lotus itself. And there's a Juzem Jin, and it resolves... So this means that for Leo, uh, you know, the pain will start here. Juzem will start to attack. And of course, there's also the Underworld Dreams chipping away from Leo's life total. There's an attack for 5. So Leo is going down to 11. And I believe he already took a damage here. Um, and I'm talking about Megu. Passing turn here. He's drawing a card. And he's on 10 life. And he's attacking him with the factory. 18. Deciding he doesn't want to chump lock yet. And taking another damage from the Juzum Jin, Megu here going to 17. Probably going to attack here. Or is he going to do something else first? There's the Hypnotic Spectre. And that resolves as well. And then <laughs> there's... Oh, interesting. A Red Elemental Blast there on the Time Twister. 
And can Leo find a snow? He cannot. He did not find a solution there for that Jews and Jin and uh, Hypnotic Specter. And that means that Megu wins this one, and we're going to go into a third game. So that's quite exciting. And of course, he had to red Elemental Blast at Time Twister, because with that Underworld Dreams on the table, that would have uh, meant seven damage for Leo, drawing seven cards. So he had to do it there. And that means we're going into game number three. Game number three, and it's 1-1. One, one. It's a thriller here. Um, Leo's on the play. Look at his hand. He's got some copy artifacts. I didn't see a fireball there. And he's taking a mulligan. And I believe Megu is taking a mulligan as well. And this is what you see more often. Actually, I do it. I'm, I do it too. When my opponent mulligans, I kind of have a tendency to think, hmm, you know what? I can kind of take a free mulligan here. Um, so let's do it as well. And um, you've probably read about the new mulligan rule. So this is still with the uh, with the old mulligan rule. So you go down to six, and if you keep, you get the scry one. But this is not looking good for Leo here, and he has to take another mulligan. And that's the thing. Before you know it, you go from seven to six, and now it's going down to five. And let's see what Megu does. He's keeping it because he's already scrying. Because you got to say, you got to first look at the six, and then you got to say, I keep it, and then you get the scry. Sometimes I see some players scrying as well, but you can only do that after you've said, okay, I'm going to keep it. And of course, with the new mulligan rule, it means you always draw seven, and then if you've taken a mulligan once, you have to put a card back, etc., etc. Uh, anyway, let's get back at the game quickly because look at what Leo's doing here. He's playing an Underground Sea followed up by an Ancestral Recall. And that's just brutal because it means that the card disadvantage that he had because of the Mulligans is now compensated. So he's he's back in the game. And Megu's probably thinking, man, you're you're so lucky. You know, now with the Recall and before that with the uh, Wheel of Fortune. And there is a Mind Twist coming here from, um, from Leo. And you can see Megu there. Oh, man, this really sucks. We're seeing a lot of mind twists. And that's usually what you see when you're reaching top eight, a lot of mind twists. It's not always pretty. Old school is not always pretty. And there is a City of Brass here for Megu. And, I mean, a Hypnotic Spectre here would be great. Or is he just going to attack? And look at what he's lost. He lost there actually with the mind twist. He lost an energy flux. And that's a great card against Leo's artifact army. And there's a Suchi hitting the board. But there's an instant disenchant. Taking a damage there from City of Brass. And it's nice. It's a nice way for actually Megu to, to splash in. I want to say splash in white. But of course white is his second color playing dead guy ill. He's splashing blue. So let's see what he's doing. Taking a damage. Is there a Hypnotic Spectre now coming? No, there's a Mind Twist as well. Oh, we're seeing so many Mind Twists. Two cards gone here. A Red Elemental Blast and a Suchi. And I'm wondering if Leo is now going to say, you know what, I'm just going to hit you for four. Because he's got two, two uh, factories. And both players are pretty low on cards because of those Mind Twists going back and forth. And I wonder what he's doing. If he's attacking with one or if he's... Okay, he's playing a Demonic Tutor. And that's pretty good. If you only have three cards in hand and one of them is a Demonic Tutor, you're like, okay, it's not too bad. And he's attacking here for two. After playing that Strip Mine and taking away his City of Brass, which is... Pretty important because that means that Megu has no access at this moment to any uh, blue mana. And blue power can kind of get you back into the game. I mean, for now, if he still would have had his City of Brass, he could have said, okay, I'm going to look up an Ancestral Recall, draw three cards, and kind of get my hand, um, you know, get back in the game and get a full hand again. But now, uh, you know, I'm not sure what's in his hand already, but he has to make sure he has a blue source first. And this is difficult. What is he going to do? And this is for a place in the finals. In the finals. 1-1 one, one here. 
and there's a scrubland interesting choice here I'm not sure if you looked that up of course attacking or hitting him for four but there is a swords to plows here so that means he takes two damage going down to 14 and um, I'm sure that was expected after that um, scrubland came in play And there is a Juzem Jin. So Library of Alexandria not really doing anything here because he only has one card in hand, but the Juzem Jin, of course, is great. So there's a 5-5 five, five body here. He's now on 13. And when you have a Juzem, you just got to attack. That's what you got to do with a Juzem Jin. I think, you know, now that they've um, unrestricted Maze of If, you know, that, that's, that's a huge downer for creatures like Jews and Jin and, and you know these creatures that get, hurt you during the upkeep and there is a Triskelion kind of the star of Leo's deck and, and when he has a Triskelion on it means he can start playing copy artifice copying the Triskelion it means he can get it back with animate deaths it's like once those strikes hit the board when you're playing against Leo they tend to kind of get a life on their own and there's a successful hit here from the Juzam, and that means that Leo's down to 12, and Megu is also on 12. But Leo can do some damage here. Maybe he's going to animate one of the factories. He's going to attack exactly, because he knows he can pump the factory with the other one if he decides to block. That's exactly what Megu's going to do. So they're trading their Mishra's factories here, and he's get, he gets 4 damage here. Ooh, and this is important there. There's a Chaos or probably going to flip on the Juzum Jin. And rem remember, he missed a flip earlier in this matchup. So this is exciting. Maybe they're discussing something. Because, of course, Megu still has two mana open, so he can respond. Oh, interesting choice here. He's going for the Scrubland, so he's choosing to deny his mana and deny his white mana. And maybe that's just a really good play here. Because I was thinking automatically, you know, take the Juzam. But maybe this is better. Because he only has two lands. He has no white mana. He has no blue mana. He has one black and one colorless. Because that library give, give, can give one colorless mana. But there is... Whoa, this is nice. This is nice. But it's not the solution, though. It's a nice balance there. Black Lotus into a balance. Unfortunately for Megu, it's not going to solve his problem here because the Triskelion is still on board and it's a 4-4 and if it can hit him for 4 Megu is going down to 3 life so let's see what's going to happen here and there is a city in a bottle taking care of the Juzam Jin and then the attack is going to 3 also taking care of the library by the way and then because what the Triskelion can do after you hit him for four Megu's down on three and he can remove the three plus one plus one counters to deal that critical three damage so that means that Leo is going to the finals but I can tell you that it's actually Megu who is going to the finals because Leo had to catch his plane so Megu you're very lucky <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a good deck, that's true too. So you're going to the finals and you're actually playing against Nick who's playing with the deck. So keep an eye on the channel if you'd like to see that final match. For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more games, you can click on the um, matches that are appearing right now on the screen. Or you, of course, you can visit the channel, Timmy the Sorcerer. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.